should you be using an A10 Mini with Ecamm? That's what we're going to have a look at in this video. We want to just unpack it and give you an opinion really on whether you need to have this as part of your workflow. Well, what is the A10 Mini? It's a camera switcher made by Blackmagic Design. And a quick look at the Blackmagic Design website shows you that they're a serious company specializing in professional production equipment. This A10 Mini is their entry-level camera switcher, and it's encouraging to see that you're buying from such a reputable brand with clearly a wealth of experience. So there are a few A10 Minis in this range, and I wanna quickly show you the differences without going into too much detail. Well, first up is the A10 Mini at $295. This is the entry level model. It's a four camera switcher. It's got some limited options for picture in picture. You can do some transitions to go between one camera and the other. If you're used to Ecamm, you're gonna find this really limited. Now we're saying four camera inputs, there's four HDMI inputs. One of them could be a games console if you wanted to mix in your gameplay with some footage of you sitting there. This device is going to be able to handle that. You've got two microphone inputs, as well as having the mic available through the HDMI inputs as well, assuming that your camera is able to send audio across HDMI. And if you're not using Ecamm or you're on a PC, you can actually use the A10 Mini with the software that comes with it and stream straight out to Facebook or YouTube or wherever else from this device. So. That's the A10 Mini. Next up is the A10 Mini Pro at $495. And what are you getting extra for this $200? The main difference is that you're getting this multi-view feature, which lets you monitor all the camera feeds at once on an external screen. And this is particularly useful if you're covering an event or you wanna be able to look at those up to four cameras and just be able to jump quickly between them. Oh, camera one's got a better feed. Nope, over to camera two, more so than if you were in a, a fixed set position where you know you want camera one, two, or three. Now, this is a great feature, and to be honest, I wouldn't have bought the basic A10 Mini if I realized that it didn't include this feature. Why would you want a camera switcher without the ability to see those different camera inputs? So in my mind, this at 495 really is the base model. Now you'll also see there's an A10 Mini Extreme at $995, and I don't know a lot about this one. I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I can see that this will take up to eight HDMI feeds. And there's some more advanced software and things in there as well. But I'm not thinking this is going to be for you. This really is, it's called an extreme, and it really is for that professional user with up to eight cameras. I couldn't even imagine working with eight cameras. So we're not gonna go into any more detail on that one. But the one that I do want you to take notice of is the A10 Mini Pro ISO at $795. Now, this one is worth the upgrade for the right people. So what you get for the extra $300 is the ability to record 1080p footage from all connected cameras, not just the live feed. So if you're recording a fitness video or cookery tutorial, and you've got three, four cameras connected over HDMI, you no longer need to run around hitting recording on all those individual cameras and then pull the SD cards in afterwards. If they're connected, you just hit record on your A10 Mini Pro ISO and it will record from all of them simultaneously. So this is giving you four clean camera feeds to be able to pull into something like Final Cut Pro and edit and mix between those cameras afterwards in post. And better still, if you're using DaVinci Resolve for your editing, this will actually give you a project file to work on. So for the right person who needs to be able to record from multiple cameras and wants to be able to edit in post, this is a fantastic tool. Well, that took me longer than I'd hoped to get through the range, but I feel you needed to know where different ones sit. And uh, I'd hate to think that you thought you'd found a bargain because it was cheaper than someone else mentioned and actually you realize you've got something that's inferior to what you need. So then how does this work with Ecamm? Is it something that you should be using? Well, I do think that that a lot of streamers are guilty of the whole shiny object syndrome and hear a YouTuber mention one of these things and seconds later they're on Amazon and they're buying it and adding it to what is potentially already an overkill production setup. If you do choose to use one of these A10 minis as part of your Ecamm setup, you simply use the USB cable that comes with it as the output from the ATM straight into your Mac. Ecamm will instantly recognize the camera and give it the label Blackmagic Design. The main thing really to consider with using one of these into Ecamm is that you're creating a bottleneck and Ecamm can no longer see your three or four individual cameras. It just sees 
the ATEM feed. So if you're wanting to do some multicam, picture in picture footage, showing a top down shot and you in the corner or something like that, the, the kind of things we've come to know and love inside of Ecamm, you're not gonna be able to do that with this setup. There are some options, as I mentioned earlier, with picture in picture, and it would just put a box in one of the corners. That's about as much as you can do. And it also means you can't go having one scene set up for camera one and another one set up for camera two and three, maybe. You gotta do this on the go, which means you're likely gonna have one hand on a stream deck or on your mouse, and the other one's sitting hovering over this controller so you can switch between those cameras as you go. To me, I'm always trying to simplify this. I want it to be as prepared and planned. If I can do this by pressing two buttons and it changes scenes, I do. So the thought of having another device over here now that I need to remember on this scene, I've got to press that button to change the camera. It's just not gonna happen for me. Oh, and did I say that the A10 mini doesn't support 4K? So you're stuck with 1080p for now. And let's be honest, that's fine for most things that people are doing. But if you're expecting to be able to maybe shoot down with the camera above and crop in on that footage, you're not really gonna be able to crop in on that 1080 without damaging the footage. Now, while we've got this here, we've got to show you an example, haven't we, of the different footage coming through. Is it better coming through the ATEM or coming through the regular cam link? Well, here are the two side by side. This is the same camera coming through the ATEM and then coming through the cam link, both at 1080p. And then just for a bit of fun, here's the cam link coming through at 4K. We've changed the settings inside of Ecamm. Big difference, isn't it? Well, as you can tell, I'm not really a fan of using the A10 Mini with Ecamm. Ecamm is an incredibly powerful tool and you're just tying up its hands and wasting its features if you're using an A10 Mini. Plus, it might be a slight difference, but I do reckon that camera feed coming through from the cam link is a little sharper than it is coming through from the ATEM. The only times really when I would choose to use one of these is when I need a, a large monitor to be able to see those different camera feeds coming through, or if I wanna record those feeds all at the same time. And I certainly know of customers who this is what they do for creating courses. They need to have three cameras that they can edit through and see which is the best shot at the different point of the video. This is absolutely the best tool for them. But as I'm recording this, Ecamm are busy working on version four, which will include video ISO. And what that means is it'll basically do the same as this ATEM Pro ISO. It will allow any attached cameras to all be recorded. And at the end of your recording or at the end of your live, it will list out all the camera inputs and you'll have them there to export individually as clean feeds to be able to play and edit with afterwards. I'm really excited for this feature. In fact, by the time you're watching this, it's probably already out. So in the same way that we've been able to do this with audio, so podcasters can now get the guest feed different to their own and then play with it afterwards, we're gonna be able to do the same thing with video. So that really is gonna do away with the need for this A10 Mini Pro. And I hope they will also include a nice switcher that will allow us to see the, the feed from those different cameras at a bigger size than we currently can. Now, if you're not on a Mac and you're sitting thinking, oh, I hear all this talk about Ecamm, then okay, this would be a great solution for you. Now, if you're not on a Mac and Ecamm isn't an option to you, then yes, this A10 Mini would absolutely work. You could go through this, you can use their software and stream straight out from it. But I gotta say, if I'm looking at paying five or $800 to buy one of these, I reckon I'd go and get a Mac Mini for the same sort of money and start using Ecamm. Honestly, it is a total game changer. And I know plenty of people that have moved across to a Mac or have got a dedicated Mac Mini sitting at the side of their PC purely so that they can use Ecamm. Don't dismiss it. So I hope that's helped and just saved you spending out more money on another piece of equipment that's going to end up in the back of that cupboard in a month's time. I'd love to hear your opinion on this. And if you're new to our channel, please be sure to check out some of our other videos and of course subscribe so that we can notify you about all our future videos. Thank you so much. See you around.